Madam Deputy Secretary General, dear friends, it is uh, honor for me to co-sponsor this side event on uh, urban policies for inclusive integration of migrants. As you probably know, like, like you have heard here, I will present my report on pre best practices for the integration of refugees into assembly today, and it in includes several good uh, examples of integration developed in and by the cities. Uh, I will now just briefly um, introduce some findings of this report. First of all, I would like to emphasize that our entire continent has been and will be facing big challenges. And we, as the Europeans, we have a responsibility to help people in need and to act in a humane and fair way. Uh, this uh, report looks at the situation that um, many of our countries are, in fact, in just now, today. Asylum applications have been processed rapidly, uh, and uh, some people will stay uh, permanently to Europe. Uh, so it is in the interest of all the refugees and all the European societies that the people who stay are effectively integrated. Unfortunately, uh, as the Commissioner for Human Rights states in his latest issue paper, our governments have not even started to work on a coordinated European response to meet these new integration needs. Uh, just a few points from my report. Firstly, integration is, of course, a very complex, complex and long process uh, requiring the commitment of decision makers, authorities, civil society, uh, but refugees also themselves. Uh, and it is, of course, uh, as a, uh, decision makers, our responsibility is paramount. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, that we don't tolerate any hostility, suspicion, or hate speech towards refugees. Uh, secondly, member states should ensure that effective legal basis for integration and, uh, and that coordination works. This is one of the findings uh, in my report, that we have still a lot of work to do to have a better coordination within our uh, societies and within our cities, actually, also. So it is very important to know who does what. When carried out a pro in proactive, pro broad-based cooperation, overlapping work and time-consuming handling of issues can be avoided. Thirdly, integration should start as early as possible. For example, mapping people, people's skills, the basis for language training, and the need for social and health services can be taken care of at the early as, uh, at the reception stage. The long in, inactive waiting time, uh, which now occur in many countries, is not in anyone's interests. So I, I will say that every chance to work, train, and experiment is important for these people. And my fa fourth and maybe last point uh, concerns children and young people. Uh, now we have seen that there are many unaccompanied minors coming uh, and have come to Europe. And I think that it's our responsibility to take care of them and, for example, tightening the criteria for family reunification does not, in my opinion, promote good integration. Because the family, of course, is the safe haven for, for all of us, like, like we all here know. And no child or young person should be left alone in Europe. Uh, of course, you understand that this report cannot include everything, 
but I, I hope, I sincerely hope that, uh, and I believe that the, the issues and the concrete examples raised in this uh, uh, report will help to plan measures in different countries. And I must remind you that there is also a questionnaire uh, added, added as an information note to the report received answers from 36 countries. And if we really want to learn and do better, we have to uh, be uh, in contact with each other and share these good practices with, with, with each other. Uh, Madam Chair, just a few words about cities and municipalities, because this is the topic in, in, in this discussion. Uh, cities and municipalities play a very important role in integration. Asylum recipients uh, will start their new lives in the local communities. The sooner the refugees learn about its activities, services and people, the better. This responsibility lies on the municipalities, but support of churches, NGOs, civil society and individuals are, is also necessary. I am a chair, chairperson of, of the Center of Multiculturalism in my own hometown. So I have been able to witness how important it is for the newcomers to have support of those who have been staying in the country for longer time. Someone who has been to learn to understand a strange culture, a weird, weird clear climate, such as Finnish one, and a slightly reserved Finns, um, can identify with the situation and is well placed to help. In our center, we have noticed that everyday commun communality plays a very important role in integration. Cooking your own food, trying new foods together with others, taking part in local sport activities, or children's plates, play dates. All, all of these are sort of low threshold ways to meet people. A common lang language is not essential, as it will develop when people come together. I hope that these best practices and good examples of integration are frequently shared. It is unnecessary to reinvent the wheel when we have practice that works. I also think that it's important to include different actors, migrants and local people when planning and carrying out different activities. So we need unity, not separation. So I hope all the best for your discussion and I will l I try to uh, hear a little bit your, your presentations, but I'm sorry I have um, migration committee and I have to be there to defend my report. Thank you so much.